Men bror, this is the way that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Brother and sister, um, today I wanted to speak to you about one topic. Why good people can die? I bet you that that question is being the heart of every one of you guys. Why they die before their time? You have someone who was really righteous and he died. And you ask yourself why? But before then, there was a brother here who was preaching the word of God. And we had a conversation. He was a Catholic and he changed to be Protestant. And I don't know what happened to his mind. Of course, the first thing he denied that the Holy Spirit. And the second thing, the communion. And he said to me that who believe uh, will not die, have everlasting life. And I said, where is this exactly that verse? And he quoted from the book of John 6, when the real communion happened, is in John 6 when God gave himself, Jesus gave himself to everyone. And said, whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He said flesh, he did say body or bread, whatever. And he said blood, he did say juice, whatever. And this guy was talking to me, we cannot kill Jesus again. I said on that verse, Jesus was still alive. He didn't die. And that verse, exactly that he's quoting from John 6, that's the part when Jesus really gave himself as the bread. So John 6, 46, he's saying here, not that any man has seen the Father. Very, really, very, really, I say unto you, he has believed on me, has everlasting life. And I said, okay, let's continue. Because this is the, the, the art of Protestant to cost, cut everything, and they don't know even what they're talking about. And the second verse was, Verily, really, verily, really, I say unto you that he believe in me have everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your father died, did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. Jesus speak to him now exactly the way that we're talking about. This is the bread which comes from heaven, that a man eat out of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread and shall live forever and the bread that I give is my flesh and I will give him life uh, no he said and the, the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world and then in the story of some of the people who really found that word very hard and they want to leave Jesus he said this man is crazy he wants us to eat his flesh and, and brother and sister here is the attack on the body of Christ which is there is nothing like the promise Whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood, this is uh, a covenant of eternal life and you find nothing like it in the whole uh, Google to yourself, you find nothing. Maybe you find in the book of the dead of the pharaohs, but with that promise of eternal life is only in the blood of Jesus and his broken body. And when Jesus uttered that, he don't have to utter it again. He said we bring Jesus and kill him again. How stupid can this be? Is God in the morning come and let it be night? Every day he come and say the same words. When was said, it was said, done. This is my body. It was in the street of Capernaum. And Jesus gave himself to the whole world without condition. And now they want to make condition. The verse that that Protestant guy who left the true faith and went to go outside, denying the feeling of the Holy Spirit, denying, you know, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, there should be evidence on your life. One of them is tongues. But you cannot really be filled with the Holy Ghost in silence. The old church, or the old, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit fell on the first time on people, was on Moses. He took out of his spirit and put on 70 men and they start to prophesy. The Holy Spirit cannot come upon you and you be silent. There is no way. Show it to me once into the word of God from the old and the new. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, it's power, it's strength. You can see it, it come on, on uh, Samson and it was showing physical strength. So I was just meditating on this last week and saying, okay, so let's say now, you know, I've been attacked, I'm not that strong physically. And, it's tra and some, some guy come attack, will I be in having a strength that come on Samson to push him away? And the Lord said, yes. 
Because this is, is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit the way I need it on that time. Children of God, read the word. Holy Spirit is a huge power. Cannot come upon you and you be silent. Cannot come upon you and you... I read the word every day. What do you read about the word? Come and let's have a challenge and show you that you do not know. Most of the word of God you don't know. You have two couple of verses and you defer to the real faith. And then here Jesus invite people to go away. He asked the disciple, would you like you to quit you too? I said, where are we going to go? And you have eternal life. So brother and sister, none of the Protestants with all my respect and love for them deceive you. Life eternal is in the body of Christ and his flesh. His flesh and his body and his blood was shed on you on the cross. No one can take that of you. And there is no condition. Whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life and I will raise him up in the last day. Now this is not my preaching because I preached that out of the pulpit many days. But because this guy challenged me into this. So the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you start prophesying. The Holy Ghost come upon you and you start to speaking, magnify the Lord. There is no way the Holy Spirit can be there. You feel a power and you silent, you're the same, unchanged. That's a power. It's a power of God. When it fills you, it bubbles inside of you, something has to come out. The easiest is the verbal because we are people to speak. That's the easiest. I remember the first day I met him. When the Holy, I said, when the Holy Spirit come upon you? I come every day. Really? Well, that's the infilling of the Holy Ghost because you leak. But one day, if you don't have that one day, the Holy Ghost was showing into the book of Acts chapter 2, then chapter 8, then chapter 10. I mean, after 8 years, after 10 years, after 20 years, the Holy Ghost was showing. And when they showed that, because Christians were speaking in tongues at that time, they were not silent like the Goet, charismatic uh, 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 and, and Pentecostal who had the Holy Ghost in them and they shy to speak in tongues in front of each other, not only in front of others. Why are you shy? Are you shy of the word of God? And I challenged the man and said to him, would you like to help me to tell you about your life? And he was afraid. He didn't, I'm going to prophesy and tell you what exactly happened to your life. Because this is the Holy Ghost. It shows you what happened to that person. Why he diverged from something very real to something very big and he think he's born again. Well, if you're born of God, you know the things of God. You don't prefer to the, so me and me again without really having offense, Muslims will never see eternal life because they can't touch alcohol. Muhammad misled them. And the, the Catholic and the, the Protestants, they will never have eternal life because they never ate the true, the true broken body of Christ and the true blood of Jesus. This is the, the, the remedy of our corrupted blood and our corrupted flesh. You need a body renewed can be eternal, uncorruptible. It's only through eating the body of Christ. Not any other way. He said to me, you're going to kill Christ again. I said on John 6, when he said that Jesus was not even died, was not even in the upper room. Guys, read the word of God and the misleading people are the Christian more than ever. Today, I just wanted to talk to you about something really. The Lord showed it to me, but the man sent me in a place of being upset because he's a preacher. He preached and he had the table with him. I said, you're going to give communion. He said, oh, leave the communion for you on Sunday. He mocked me. And he wants the Holy Spirit, but he will never open his mouth. Because his Holy Spirit is silent and he's deaf. There is a deaf spirit, on the, deaf, dumb spirit. Man cannot speak. Man cannot preach. Man, man cannot go with testimony and speak about what God did in their life. And to break this power of dumbness within human being, you have only the Holy Spirit who can untie your tongue. So don't be deaf, dumb, and think you are in God. Shame on you. And these are the street preachers. What about the corruption within the churches? Well, Father, I pray that people do not continue to be proud, arrogant, and empty, but they humble themselves and they know the cure of the blood is the blood of Jesus. And the cure of their 
corruptible body is the broken body of Christ. And with this simple fact, you didn't put anyone out of that, that offer. You didn't put any condition. And I pray, Father, that all people will receive that offer. And they do not have to deny it, deny eternal life because of opinion of others. Now I'm going to speak about 